In today's video, we're going to talk about PG Bouncer multiple instances and in some cases it can drastically improve your TPS. In this animation, we can see that uh, we got a huge TPS boost when we used two instances of PG Bouncer versus one instance of PG Bouncer. Later in the video, we're going to demonstrate that scenario for you. In this diagram, you can see that we are using one PG Bouncer instance. By default, as you know, it runs on 6432. Applications are connecting to DB server via this one instance. But in this diagram, you can see that uh, we have uh, two instances of PG Bouncer and applications are routing connections to Postgres DB server via the two instances. And here we are using a variable called so reuse port. And then uh, this variable so reuse port can enable us to use multiple instances of PG Bouncer. And how do you set up multiple instances? Here is a step by step procedure. First, in your INI file, you need to enable SO reuse port to 1. And then you need to create separate INI file for each of the instance. Let's say you have three PG Bouncer instances. You need to have PG Bouncer 1.ini for the first one, 2.ini for the second, 3.ini for the third. So you need to have three separate INI files for the three separate PG Bouncer instances. So let's say you only have two, then you only need two config files or two INI files. And then uh, you also need a Unix socket directory, log file, PID file, etc. You need to change those for the respective PG Bouncer instance. And you need to create the directories needed. For example, uh, Unix socket directory, you need it, you need to create it. And then finally, you create a service file and launch the instance. So there is a lot of procedure here and uh, we try to automate this with the help of a shell script. Later on, we're going to show you how to use a shell script to automate this procedure. Now, uh, to begin with, let's see how many PG Bouncer instances are running. You can do PS minus EF. You can see that uh, we have two instances. One is PG Bouncer 1, the second is PG Bouncer 2. You can also check service PG Bouncer 1 status. See that it is running and active in uh, 2 status. Even the second one is running and active. And uh, you can see that we have separate INI file. The first one has uh, Bouncer 1.ini. The second one has bouncer2.ini. So each of them has a separate INI files. And then uh, we can also check for a couple of things. Grab NSI SO reuse. This variable needs to be turned on or you need to set it to 1 as discussed before. And then we used a shell script to launch these two instances. We're going to demonstrate that later on. And a couple of other things that needs to change uh, are PID file, socket directory. For example, if you see socket, you see that uh, the first instance has this one as the socket directory. And uh, if you see the second one, It has uh, this one. So, anyway, so both the instances are running now. Uh, as we saw, we're going to make sure. Oh, sir. So, we have two of them running. Let us stop one of them. We'll stop the second one because we need to run benchmark with only one instance to begin with and then compare with the two instance scenario. Service PG Bouncer to stop. So we stopped the second one and if you run the same command like before, you see that uh, we only have one instance of PG Bouncer running now. 
Now, uh, I have second terminal open for the same server where I'm monitoring the CPU usage of, uh, on that server. So, basically, what I'll do is I'll start the benchmarking process with one instance, as you can see. Let's run a benchmark. So, this is the benchmark I'm going to run. Um, this is the user, and then 60 seconds. These are the client connections and uh, threads, etc. And uh, I'm running a select only workload. And then uh, I'll give the password. Now it started the load and it's going to run for one minute. Um, and then we'll see the TPS numbers. But remember that uh, this only has one instance uh, in this test and we'll compare later with the two instance scenario. I'm going to pause this video and resume once it is done. Now the test is done and you can see the TPS is around 13k, 13.6k. And uh, we used only one instance. And uh, let's run one more time just to get an average. Same test I'm going to repeat. And then it is running for the second time just to get an average. In the second terminal let us see the CPU usage. This is interesting to note. As you can see, we are running one instance of PG Bouncer and uh, it is consuming this much CPU. So it is using a lot of CPU and uh, whenever you see that your PG Bouncer is using a lot of CPU like this, uh, you, it's time for multiple instances. Sometimes this can definitely help. So whenever you see high CPU usage by your PG Bouncer, and if you want to improve your TPS, just uh, try and benchmark with uh, multiple instances. So the number of instances depend on, depends on your number of cores. How many cores do you have? And also it depends on the workload, the concurrent workload. Sometimes you may not get uh, the benefit of using uh, multiple instances. So just benchmark and uh, see if it is uh, useful for your particular workload. So now you can clearly see that we only have one PG Bouncer instance. When we run the next scenario, we'll see two of them. So the CPU is this much. And let's go back. Uh, it's, it's just done. And uh, you can clearly see that uh, the TPS uh, is uh, this much. And uh, it's almost the same as before. So around 13.6K before, now it's 13.1K. So that is the average, uh, around 13.3k is the average TPS we got with one instance. Now, as you can see, once the load is done, the CPU is idle. So it's nothing is being used now. Uh, before when the load was running, uh, we saw there was a lot of CPU usage and uh, PG Bouncer uh, instance was using a lot. So now let us start the second instance. And uh, now we only have one running, so let us quickly start the second one service PG Bouncer 2 status. It is stopped. Let us start it back. So now check the status it is running and uh, if you see we have two instances running so let us repeat the same test like before but now remember that uh, we have two instances and then uh, let us uh, so it is running now with two instances the same workload uh, let's see the second terminal the second terminal where we are monitoring CPU, you can see that now we clearly have two PG Bouncer instances and you can see that both of them are using high CPU, which is good because now you have two instances heavily working on, uh, you know, processing your workload, which is good to see. So that's why I said in the previous scenario, there was only one PG Bouncer instance and it was using 99% of the CPU and uh, we have uh, many cores on this server on this particular server we have eight cores 
but uh, in production on your servers you may have a you know lot of cores uh, and uh, when you have a um, you know huge tps requirements definitely try the multiple instance uh, deployment uh, and it may help you so now we need to wait until this is done but as you can clearly see it is using both of them so probably it's done yeah it's done you can see that uh, the cpu usage went down and you, you no longer see the pg bouncer here because the cpu usage is almost uh, ideal so basically let's go back and see the tps wow we got around 27k tps before it was 13.3 average now we got 27k to tps so that's almost double we got double the tps so let us run one more time to average out so we are running one more time and then uh, let's see the cpu usage again uh, we're seeing a good amount of uh, cpu usage now um, and uh, we'll see what will be the final number now you can clearly see that the tps again is around 26k and this was before first run and second run is also around the same so we can see huge benefit of using two instances here when you compare with the previous one previous one only had 13.3k uh, now we have seen a scenario where uh, performance improved drastically using multiple instances but how do you configure it we have this blog post addressing the same scenario we're going to add this link in the description of the video but uh, here are the steps uh, the first step is uh, we need to enable so reuse port once you install pg bouncer there is a default ini file and then you can use that uh, to clone it to the other instances but you need to set this variable to one and then uh, if you are doing it manually you need to create three ini files if you want three instances and then uh, have this set to one in each of them and uh, you need to make some more changes for example you need to change unix socket directory log file pid file in all three of them to be different here we have it as a bouncer one dot log, log pid the same for second and third and finally you need to create the directories needed uh, for these uh, socket files uh, uh, unix socket directory you need to create three directories and uh, once that is done we're going to create the service file separately for each instance and then uh, add this there and finally start it so this is the manual process uh, but uh, let's say you're having 10 pg bouncer instances doing this manually can be really painful so we came up with a shell script to automate this and this is a you know repo but uh, let us show you how that looks so this is the shell script uh, we used to spin up uh, two instances here uh, you may want to change the config file path in our case we are using utc pg bouncer log file path we are using this pid file path this one socket file path and then uh, we are reading the number of instances as an argument so let's say when you invoke the shell script you give the argument as four it's going to substitute uh, num instances with a value of four then uh, you also need to give the template uh, where your template is uh, for our for us uh, the template is uh, located in this location by default uh, when you install pg bouncer you get an ini file and uh, just add the variable so reuse port equal to one there and then give the path here or if you want to customize more 
for example the max client connections etc whatever you want to customize your pg bouncer put everything in this uh, template file and then give the path here because uh, this script is going to use the same template for the other instances so this has to be properly configured for it to reuse now let us look at the script itself it has a main function the first step is uh, creating config files the second is uh, directories needed uh, services uh, creation and then finally launching so let us see one by one the first one is create config files so if we go to that function create config files and uh, you can see that uh, we are creating the different config files so we are doing a for loop depending on the number of instances we are copying the template there and then uh, basically we are changing a couple of things log file location pid file etc and then uh, you know creating separate config files for each instance once that is done the next step is creating directories um, because we need to create separate unix socket directory we are doing that uh, and then uh, next step is creating services so let's say you have three instances you need three services so we are doing that uh, in this step as you can see and then finally uh, we are launching those instances so if you have a lot of instances let's say 10 or uh, you know 6 or whatever leverage this shell script and we tested this on ubuntu but if you are using different flavor of linux you may need to tweak it a little bit but uh, this is the basic script that can be used to deploy multiple instances please do try and customize if you need uh, more uh, features to the script uh, email us and we'll try to help you